ulnar nerve compression sites. This is commonly tested particularly for the hand surgeon, whether it's plastic or orthopedic, or however you got your certification in hand surgery. So you can see here, coming down, here's the ulnar nerve. It's gonna pierce through and go from the anterior to the posterior side of the arm. Uh, the first site here is the actual arcade of Struthers. Now this is just actually a fascial extension from the uh, triceps fascia that attaches to the medial intramuscular septum. So the arcade of Struthers is a, a common way or an eponym, not even named by Struthers himself, actually, that extends from the triceps to the medial intramuscular septum. So that's one potential site of compression. Next up is the actual medial intramuscular septum itself. It can be sharp, it can compress the nerve directly. If you palpate it with your finger, it's actually a very sharp edge and uh, it's quite rubbery and thick. So that's a potential compression site and it is often resected and cut out to prevent compression of the nerve at this point. So arcade of Struthers is one point followed by the medial intramuscular septum itself. Coming up next, there can be actually a bony prominence or some sort of a bony pathology that can compress the nerve uh, at the medial epicondyle itself. This is an important point because not all compression sites have to be soft tissue only. Next up is actually the cubital tunnel. Now the cubital tunnel actually refers to the tunnel that the nerve passes through at the elbow, which is formed by the medial collateral ligament, which spans from the olecranon to the humerus, and the ulnar nerve is directly sitting on top of this that serves as the floor, including also some of the elbow joint. The roof is formed by Osborne's ligament, which is technically an evolutionary remnant of the Anconius epitrochlearis muscle. Uh, there's actually a great study done by Delon where he dissected out baboon arms and noted that monkeys have the Anconius epitrochlearis muscle as a majority of humans, except 15% have Osborne's ligament, which is a fibrous aponeurotic remnant of that Anconius epitrochlearis muscle. That is also a classically tested question is the Anconius epitrochlearis muscle, which is going to be literally in the same exact spot as the Osborne's ligament because it is a remnant. Osborne ligament is a remnant of that muscle. Now continuing down um, in the cubital tunnel, so Osborne's ligament is a potential compression site. It holds the ulnar nerve in position in as serving as the roof of the cubital tunnel. Next up, the cubital tunnel will pass under the flexi carpi ulnaris. There's two heads of the FCU muscle. There's a fascia that spans the two heads. This fascia that spans the two heads of the FCU muscle can cause compression here at the site where the ulnar nerve passes right in between those two heads deep. Additionally, the nerve can pass further as it goes here is protected. And here at the distal part with the antibrachial fascia, which is just the fascia of the forearm, this can be thickened here near the wrist and can cause compression. And also, more distally in the hand, at Guyans Canal. And there's three zones of Guyans Canal, and I'll make another video to talk about the three zones of Guyans Canal and ulnar nerve compression there.